Think about our world for a minute. Think about who is popular, who the celebrities are, and why they are celebrities. Look at our politicians and the way they speak to and about each other and anyone who disagrees with their point of view. Now listen to that verse again. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. This week, we're talking about submitting to our neighbor. And it's a good thing we talked about submitting to scripture last week, because we sure would have to look hard for guidance on this in our culture today. Again, we want to remind you that Christian submission doesn't come from a place of weakness, but a place of freedom. We don't submit because we are being made to, but because we choose to submit. We choose to make our neighbors just as, or even more important than ourselves. We choose this because that is what God asks and because it makes the world a better place. But who are we talking about when we talk about submitting to our neighbors? Are we talking only about the people who live next door to us? Well, an expert of the law asked Jesus this very question in Luke 10. And Jesus answered him with the story of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. You know what's really interesting about that story? For the crowd who have been, would have been hearing this story, they would have said that what the priest and the Levite did was the right thing to do because by touching a bloody and perhaps dead body, they would have been made unclean. It wasn't convenient or proper for them to have helped their neighbor. Then we have our third character come along and it is a Samaritan. In Jesus's time, Samaritans and Jews did not interact. Samaritans were seen as less than the Israelites. And as a result, there was a lot of animosity between Samaritans and Israelites. Yet in Jesus' story, it wasn't the religiously upstanding people who stopped to help. It was the people you would least expect. In that story, Jesus makes it clear that our neighbors aren't just the people that live next door, the people that we know or get along with. It's not even the people that are convenient to help. Everyone is our neighbor, especially those in need. In Isaiah 117, it says, learn to do good seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 24, we hear, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. These are instructions for how we should interact with the world, how we should submit to our neighbors. We are to right the wrongs of injustice, ease suffering, help those in need, and put others first. It's pretty clear, but it can be so hard to do. I remember one year on AOSP that my homeowner was a very grumpy old man who was unhappy with everything we did. It would have been easy to respond with my own grumpiness or even to walk away from helping him, but it certainly would not have been helpful to anyone to do either of those things. 
You see, this was a man that had always done things for himself. He was proud and capable, but he was suffering from lung cancer. He could no longer take care of his home the way he was used to, and it hurt him. It hurt him to have to watch these kids and their adults come in and do things differently than he would have done them. Rather than let go of that need to control the situation, he held on to that hurt. But rather than hold on to the hurt he was doling out, our team responded with as much kindness as we could muster and did the best job we could. I'd like to be able to tell you that by the end of the week, he was our biggest fan, but that's just not what happened. He was still angry and mean, but his house was safer for him, even if not exactly in the way he demanded. That week taught me a lot about submitting to your neighbor. It wasn't about me or my feelings that week. It wasn't even about making him happy. It was about doing what God presented as an opportunity to humble myself and make my neighbor more significant. Whether he saw it or not, we made his house safer. We shared the love of Christ with him, even if he was unwilling to accept it. We did it not for the praise or the recognition, but because he was our neighbor and needed something we could provide. That's what it means to submit to your neighbor. It means to recognize their need and their worth, to put aside your ego and even your comfort in order to share God with them through whatever means you have available to you, to treat them the way that you would hope someone would treat you or the people you love if there was a need. Sometimes it means donating food and not just the food you don't want. Sometimes it means giving up a weekend or a week of your free time to work on someone else's home. Sometimes it means being kind to someone who others are treating badly, even if you get made fun of for doing it. Sometimes it means giving up something you want in order to provide someone else with what they need. Sometimes it might literally mean giving someone the shirt off your back. Submitting to your neighbors will not always be easy, but it will always be worth it. Even if your neighbor isn't always grateful, they will still be changed. Deep down, they will see that someone cared enough to help them. And even if they don't understand it, you will have shared the love and care with them that God feels for them.